Alrighty, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the atomic orbital section of the inorganic chemistry for advanced higher. So at the moment, with our electronic arrangement, we know a very basic arrangement. If I asked you to write down the electron arrangement of sodium, you'd probably do 2, 8, 1. Whereas now we're going to be learning a slightly more different way of writing this. Um, so this all depends on a theory called quantum numbers. And what really does a quantum number do? Really, it tells us two things. It tells us something about the energy in terms of the electron. And it also tells us the position of the electron in terms of the structure of the atom. You know, if we draw an atom, you'll see you've got your nucleus. And then you will have your electrons around it. So we're kind of pinpointing if it's here or if it's here, somewhere roughly in that gap. Chemists have a rough idea of where an electron is. We don't know exactly, but our quantum numbers can certainly tell us a very good point of where it is. We have four quantum numbers. First one being your principle, second one being your angular momentum, third one being magnetic, and the fourth one being your spin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through some of these quantum numbers just so that they make a little bit more sense. So what's the first one? The first one is N. So what that is is it tells us really what energy level the electron is. So if we go back to your basic 2, 8, 1 of your sodium, you know, N equals 1 could be that first one here. N equals 2 could be that second energy level there. So it's just basically telling you where it is. So the second quantum number is your angular momentum quantum number. Now that relates to something known as the shape of your orbital. This is new, this isn't something that we learn about. So very quickly, an S orbital looks like a very circular shape. Your P orbital is like a dumbbell shape. And last but not least, your D orbital can almost be like a double dumbbell shape, where you've got one on one side and one kind of intersecting. Don't worry, further down I've got better pictures of this. Um, you don't really need to worry about an F orbital when it comes to advanced higher. You only really can get asked to draw your S and your P orbitals. So if we have a look at the table here, your value of n is 1. What that means is your L can be 0 all the way up to n minus 1. So in this case, when you've got a value of n being 1, really you can only get a value of L being 0. As you see, further down you go, you can get 1, you can get 2, you can go all the way down to 3. And at the side, it shows you the S, P, D, F orbitals that it relates to. Basically, your first energy level has got one S orbital. Your second energy level has got your S and your P. Your third energy level has got your S, P and D. And then fourth, you've got your S, P, D and F. We only really need to worry about the first three. They're very rare that we get asked to work about an F orbital, so don't panic too much about those ones. So here we have our X orbital. That's your circular shape. As the size of your N increases, so does the size of your S orbital. You know, your 4S could be something really large. So if we scroll down, we can have a look at your P orbital. So it's a dumbbell shape along a different axis. So if you can have a look, you can see you've got an X, a Y, and a Z axis. So depending on the way that the dumbbell shape lies on that axis depends on what it is. For example, you've got a Z axis here, so that's why it's a PZ. Sorry, a Z axis. Um, an X axis being PX, and then finally a Y being PY. You will be asked to draw these ones, because it is so easy to identify, you know, they could give you your axis and label it and then say what, what orbital is this and you'll be able to see from my bad drawing that that's your PZ. However, they might just give you an axis with nothing labelled and you have to identify what it is and you'll be able to say that that is any P orbital. If you scroll down to your D orbitals, they are a wee bit more complex. You can have a look at, for example, this first one here. It's between the Y and the Z the Y and the Z, the Y and the Z axis. So what that means is it's kind of lying between the two of them. The only one you will be able to ask to identify is this DZ square. The reason for that is it's your dumbbell shape with your kind of thing, this kind of like donut shape I see around the middle. So that's the only D orbital you will be asked to identify. The rest of them is just going to be your P or your S. So we move on to our last two. We have our magnetic quantum number. That really just tells you roughly the orientation in space with that one's so again roughly where it's going to be within your energy level. And last but not least, your spin quantum number. Your spin quantum number is a fairly nice one. 
it is either a plus or a half, depending on clockwise or anti-clockwise. Um, I tend to make a little joke saying if you're feeling really happy and you're writing quantum numbers, you write plus a half. Or if you're, you're not really having a good day, you write minus a half. So a wee bit of a subliminal message letting us know how you are doing. So here's a summary of what we've got so far. So your atomic orbital is basically a region in space where your electron is going to be found. A really important thing here is your atomic orbital can hold two electrons. So maximum of two, that's an S, a P, a D or an F, we can only hold two. Your atomic orbital increases in size and energy as the value of N increases. So remember I showed you the 1S, 2S and 3S subshell being slightly different in size. Now we're moving on to something called degenerate here. Um, so what that means is it means that the orbitals have the same energy. What does that mean? You could have three 2P orbitals. They are degenerate because they have the same energy. So are three 3p orbitals as well. However, an individual 3p and an individual 2p are not degenerate because your 3p orbital is slightly bigger and has more energy than your 2p orbital. Here's our summary table. Um, so you've got your first principal quantum number. That means it can be any number, one, two, three, four, really whatever you like. Your angular momentum is L. So that's your shape. So it goes all the way from L equals zero all the way up to N minus one. Your magnetic quantum number is your orientation in space, and that is minus L all the way up to plus L, so it can be any of those values in between. Spin is your fairly easy one. Again, it's clockwise or anti-clockwise, and that can either be plus a half or minus a half. And that's just finished the first section of your atomic orbitals. I'm not going to bother going on to electronic configuration just yet. It's probably worth having a look at your inorganic book one and trying the questions on page 21, just so you understand the topic so far.